So I've been creating traditional comics for a while now, and along the way, I picked up a few hacks. <laughs> People of the internet, I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome back to the Underground Laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And sometimes we create comics. Sometimes those comics do feature zombies. Uh, this is my Kids vs. Zombie comic that I've been working on for a while, Young and the Dead. It's kind of like Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. But so I'm getting ready to start another page here on my comic book. So over the years, Creating comic books traditionally, I have picked up a few tips, some things that I want to share with you guys, and so I decided to put everything together in a nice list, and you know, some of these things may be heard of, but I'm pretty sure there might be a few things in here that uh, might surprise you. So let's get into my traditional comic book art hacks. Alright, we're going to start with hack number one, raise your ruler. Sometimes when you use just a regular ruler on paper, you might get this smudge here. Um, hopefully not that bad, but it can happen. Uh, but one way to fix that is to kind of raise the ruler up. Now sometimes rulers will come with a little bit of cork on the bottom, and that'll help do that. But if you don't have one of those kind of rulers, just take some masking tape and uh, put a little strip on the bottom, maybe two if you need to raise it a little more. and. That will help put the, you know, lift the ruler off the page so it's not actually touching. So then when you go to draw your line and you pull it back and hopefully uh, you'll eliminate some of that smudging. Hack number two, splicing. So I'm going to do a little splicing demo. You're going to need some masking tape, some scotch tape, an X-Acto knife, and if you have one, a light table. If you don't have a light table, we've got a little hack for that coming up to kind of give you a little round about something you can do instead of that light table. But uh, right now you just want to line up your two sheets of paper. Now splicing, if you need to splice things, it's usually uh, sometimes you might have like an 8x10 scanner or you know 8.5x11 scanner, you need something that's more comic book size like an 11x17 or in this case I've got a double page spread. Uh, I do have 11x17 scanner but that's not big enough for a double page spread. So say if I got my pencils out and I want to do a nice ink and I want to splice together these, uh, then I want to line those up. I want to overlap them, as you saw previously, just so you can get them lined up. You can see through it with the light table. Then put your masking tape on there, and then get a metal ruler, and just slice right down the middle. And now you're just going to remove those two excess little uh, sheets that we don't need anymore, or those little lines of paper. And uh, then you're going to have a perfectly uh, good cut. So everything should butt up really nice together. So go ahead and, and butt those two pages up to each other. And then we're going to get our masking tape out one more time. And we're going to just secure that with some masking tape on the top. Now, obviously, uh, you don't want to keep it that way because the masking tape doesn't look good on the on the front of your your page so we're going to flip it over and we're going to put some uh, some scotch tape on there some transparent tape whatever brand you want if you use scotch brand but you know scotch is like it's like kleenex you know it's it's what everyone calls it no matter what kind you use okay so then get your strip out and be real careful with this don't do what i did where i got it stuck to the paper and everything and uh, just start at the top and gradually move it down but um yeah this also works really well if you want to do a nice presentation um if you don't have a big enough printer if you need to splice some pieces together um Usually you can't even tell, like unless you're really close, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. So you can even use this to pre present something if you need, uh, you know, if you need a backdrop or something like that for uh, whatever comic or you're presenting something, it works real well. So it's a good, good, uh, good thing to know how to splice together uh, something. You can trim off these bottom and top edges where they kind of, they're, they, you know, bleed over a little bit too. Hack number three, flip your art. Now, a lot of you artists that work digitally, you can do this in Photoshop by flipping your image around, or you can do it on a light table, or just hold it up to a light, just to double check your artwork to make sure everything looks good, because sometimes when you draw, you don't really see some of the mistakes unless you flip that around. Hack number four, create a makeshift light table. Uh, this is really easy. All you have to do is find a window, and if you've got a sunny day, put your image, the image that you want to trace, put it down, and then put your paper over it, and just tape those down, and you can go ahead and trace that. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. You can also, if you have a glass table, you can put a light under it. Uh, I used to do that a lot, because uh, light tables can get expensive. 
Um, but uh, there are many other ways to kind of get that same effect. Basically, any way you can get a light source under a transparent or semi-transparent surface, uh, you can use that as a light table. Also, if you're really careful, you can use your computer monitor or maybe even a laptop. You just got to be real careful not to damage that screen because sometimes you can, your laptop's a little more portable and you can't always take a light table everywhere you go. Hack number five, use a pencil holder. Now, if you're like me, you go through pencils like crazy and you get these little nubs that you can't really do anything with. So you can go online or find them in the store. You can order those pencil holders there. But if you don't have one or if you just need to make one because you don't have one lying around, go ahead and uh, get a pen, a Sharpie, like this size Sharpie, this thin point Sharpie works really well. It's just something that the pencil will fit through. And then you can uh, use that as a pencil holder. Um, if you want something a little more secure, you know sometimes I just hold it with my you know just pinch it with my fingers because basically all you need is you just need that little extension to kind of that kind of rest between your thumb and forefinger um, and if you don't if you you know if if you need something you know to hold it a little better just use some tape and that will work fine and uh, you know it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of ghetto but it works in a pinch Here's a quick little tip, hack number six, flip your X-Acto blade. Now some of the newer X-Acto blades come with those little plastic cases, uh, the little coverings. Those are great. Uh, maybe yours doesn't have it or maybe you lost yours. Just flip the blade around, then it's safe and it's not going to, you know, <laughs> poke you when you store it and everything. And as you can see, because they kind of roll just down the table, also you can find these little triangular pencil holders. They stop pencils from rolling down. Now pencils aren't going to hurt you if they roll down, uh, not usually, but an X-Acto blade might poke a hole in your foot so that that will help you on to hack number seven leave the lid off so a lot of the newer inks when you get them it seems like a lot of the ink manufacturers nowadays are watering down their inks uh, but a way to kind of bypass this is just take the lid off and uh, just leave it sitting like that for you know for about a day and the ink will start to thicken up now word of caution if you have little kids or cats especially you're gonna have to put this somewhere where it's not gonna get knocked over because obviously this is permanent ink and it does not come out hack number eight use a bottle cap so when you get a bottle of ink especially a new bottle it's pretty full so when you dip your brush in it or your nib or whatever you're using you don't always know the level of ink that's in there and sometimes you can get too much on your brush or nib so if you want to have a little more control over how much ink you have just get a plastic bottle these work real well you can use you can use different things but I always use plastic bottle caps because they're you know they're pretty available if you drink bottled water and uh, just get a little eyedropper put a little bit in there and then like I said you have a lot more control over how much ink goes on your brush and you don't get too much on there and uh, you can make less of a mess on your fingers and everything so all right hack number nine make an eyedropper now a lot of inks may come with an eyedropper like this Higgins black magic but they're kind of cheap and they get clogged up a lot so they don't last very long so I don't really rely on those but what you can get you can order these little pipettes I think people use them for essential oils but you can get a big bag of like a hundred of them for super cheap on Amazon um, and those work real well I use these all the time um, and like I said they're cheap and you can clean them out or whatever you want and reuse them or you know if you want to just dispose them you can do that too or if you're in a bind just you can also use a regular drinking straw just cover you know drop it in there cover the top of it and that will hold the ink in there and then just drop it in your reservoir in this case like I said we're using a bottle cap works really well Hack number 10, reactivate Pro White. So if you're a traditional artist like me, uh, you tend to make mistakes and we don't have an undo button when we do traditional work. So I use Pro White. Now as you can see there, sometimes that Pro White, if you don't use it often or you know, if you had it for a while, it can dry up. But if you just put a little tiny bit of water in there, screw the cap back on, and just leave it sitting overnight and it will kind of pop back to normal. And you can also do this if you make your corrections with gouache, it kind of works the same way. And through the magic of video editing, I left it sit overnight, and now you can see it's pretty much back to normal, and it works really well, and you can go ahead and make your corrections or effects or whatever you want to do. Hack number 11, use a smudge guard. Now, you don't want to smudge when you're inking. Sometimes you can put a piece of paper underneath you, but if you don't want to do that, or if you want a better way to do it, maybe get one of these smudge guards. Uh, they're used for, like, if you have a Cintiq or a tablet, so you don't smudge the, uh, you know, the screen, and it moves 
you know, quickly across the screen. So those work really well for traditional drawing as well. But if you don't want to invest in one of those, or if you just don't have time to get one, uh, and if you have a glove lying around, just use a glove. I've got a cotton glove here. I cut the fingertips off of those, and it works pretty much just as well. And we have arrived at hack number 12, fix it with a patch. Now sometimes you have a mistake that's uh, too big to use, just white out or pro white or whatever you want to use. So you want to get a separate piece of Bristol. These are just some different you know, shots of headshots that I wasn't really happy with. So I went and redrew them. Then I'm just going to go ahead and get my X-Acto knife and cut them out as close as I can. You can also do this digitally, but since we're talking about traditional stuff, that's what I'm going to do there. Uh, just pop that out. And now what you want to do is you want to get a slim piece of cardboard. Just cut out a piece of cardboard like you see here. Get some masking tape and tape that down. Put your image face down like that and uh, get some Super 77 or whatever spray mount you want to use and just take it outside and spray that. And uh, that way you don't get it all over your hand or anything. Then just get your image rested on your X-Acto blade and find out where you want. Get it into position and once you got it there, Press down on it and voila, there you go. Now you may need to go ahead back in there if you got a little overlapping like you see there. Just go ahead and get your pro white out and you can kind of fix that. You know what, I'm feeling generous so I'm going to give you a bonus hack and that is make a hand lettering guide. Now this is a tip that I learned from Kevin Cross who likes his lettering to look handmade but say your handwriting's not that great or whatever, you want to create a guide, just print out your comic book type and put it under a light table and go over it and you're going to get some nice inconsistencies and it's going to look it's just going to look a lot better and more organic. All right, so I hope you enjoyed some of those hacks. I uh, hope there were some new things in there for you to take away. And I'm curious if you guys have some little tidbits of knowledge that maybe I didn't mention, maybe I don't even know about. I'd like to know about them. If you got some good ideas, let me know in the comments section. And other than that, I will see you guys later. That is all. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here in the Art Lab. There's a lot of other great content on the channel, so click that subscribe button and you won't miss a thing. If you're an aspiring evil genius, visit circuits.com for all your mad science supply needs. And if you want to contact me, hit me up in the comments section or follow me on social media. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you then.